My name is Chris and this story happened about two years ago in September. I was 15 years old and had at the time started a new school. I was there for about two weeks and I had yet to make any friends. There was another new student that started. His name was Caleb. He was a bit socially awkward but we started talking, hanging out together and soon became friends. We both had something in common and being the new kids at school. I hung out with Caleb at school a few times during the weekends. The more time I spent with this dude, Caleb, the more uncomfortable I became around him. He would always speak about strange or depressing topics. He would ask me things like how I will kill somebody and get away with it. Every weird question he asked me, he would then tell me in great length and detail what he would do in that situation. It was like he thought about this stuff all the time. One weekend, I went to Caleb's house for a sleepover. When I arrived at Caleb's house, he was home alone. Caleb never spoke about his mom and he told me that his dad was always working late and he wouldn't see him until the morning time. So we ordered pizza, played video games and watched movies until late at night. I remember looking at the time and I saw it was 2.40 a.m. I said I was tired and I told Caleb I wanted to go to sleep. So I went downstairs because I would be sleeping on a fold out couch and Caleb would be sleeping in his room. It took some time for me to fall asleep because Caleb kept me awake by walking around upstairs and switching the lights on and off. I remember having an awful dream that I was drowning and I felt like I was about to die. I woke up in a panic and Caleb had his hands around my throat. He was shaking me. I sat up coughing and struggling to breathe. After I sat up, Caleb asked if I was all right and told me that he came downstairs to get a glass of water and saw it looked like I was having a nightmare. So he shook me to wake me up. I told Caleb I was fine and I thanked him for waking me up. Caleb went back upstairs. I was a bit shook up from what just happened, so I didn't fall asleep right away. I eventually calmed down and managed to get back to sleep after about an hour. When I woke up in the morning, I saw Caleb sitting on the couch on the other side of the room, staring at me. He said I should leave because his dad would be home soon. It was an odd way to end our sleepover, I remember thinking to myself. I thought about if Caleb's dad even knew I was even staying over. Either way, I didn't feel welcome anymore, so I did what Caleb said and I left to go home. About two days later, someone on Facebook messaged me, saying that they saw that I was friends with Caleb, and they told me that Caleb used to go to their school. He didn't warn me to stay away from him. He said Caleb was accused of killing another student at a sleepover, and the case went to court. Caleb was found not guilty due to a lack of motive and evidence, but the school Caleb was at didn't want him there anymore. I wasn't sure if I believed what that random person had told me about Caleb, but I did think about the recent sleepover I had. I thought about if Caleb really was trying to wake me up from a nightmare, or was he trying to kill me in my sleep. Caleb did make me feel uncomfortable at times, but after being told he was accused of killing another student, it kinda made me afraid of him. I decided not to spend so much time with Caleb after that, and only hung out with him in school. About two months later, he moved away and I eventually lost contact with him until a few years later. I saw something on Facebook about a murder in another town. I saw Caleb's picture and I read about what happened. Caleb managed to get a girlfriend and one day he went to her house to spend time with her while she was babysitting her brother. While Caleb was there, his girlfriend fell asleep as he played video games with her younger brother. She woke up to a woman screaming. That woman was her mother. Caleb's girlfriend went downstairs, saw her mother on her knees screaming. She then looked over at the game area where her brother and Caleb were. At least she thought Caleb was there. What she saw was horrifying. Her brother was laying on his back. Blood was everywhere. But that wasn't the worst of it. His head was missing and Caleb wasn't anywhere to be found. They immediately called the cops and Caleb was actually caught roaming the streets with blood all over him, including his mouth. Caleb confessed to killing the little boy, but he also confessed to eating parts of him. One thing that they never found was his head. Caleb doesn't remember. Well, 
At least that's what he told the police. My name is Corey, and growing up I had a best friend whose name was Joshua. I used to have sleepovers at Joshua's house quite often, and in the warmer months, we would have campouts out in his back garden. What was nice was behind Joshua's back garden was a huge forest where we spent a lot of time exploring and playing. It was Friday, and I was with Joshua at his house. His mom said dinner wouldn't be ready for another 45 minutes, so he suggested that we went outside and play with Joshua's new walkie-talkies. So that's what we did until dinner was ready. Later that night, we were in Joshua's treehouse playing board games. His parents had already said goodnight to us. As we were playing board games, I heard a crackling static noise. I asked Joshua what that noise was, and he said it's just a walkie-talkie. He said it's probably Doug. I asked, who the hell is Doug? Joshua told me it was this guy that he met out in the woods, and he seemed really cool. Joshua had given him a walkie-talkie, and they speak sometimes at night. I asked Joshua if Doug went to our school. He said he didn't think Doug even went to school. Joshua turned up the walkie-talkie and replied to Doug. Now, when I first heard Doug's voice, he didn't sound like no kid. He did not sound our age at all. Doug asked if Joshua wanted to go with him to check out his gaming room. I asked Joshua what he meant by gaming room. He told me that Doug keeps asking him to go to his house with him. Joshua told me that Doug doesn't really take no for an answer and usually has to just turn off the walkie-talkie. He replied back to Doug saying he can't go with him because he's in his treehouse and was about to go to sleep. Joshua then turned off the walkie-talkie. We spent the rest of the night trading Yu-Gi-Oh cards, playing games before we went to sleep. I don't know why, but I woke up in the middle of the night. I saw a light shining in the treehouse. I thought Joshua was awake reading comics, but when I looked at him, he was asleep. The light was coming from outside. I looked out the window of the treehouse and I saw a figure standing at the edge of the forest shining a flashlight up in the treehouse. They switched it off when they noticed me, pulled up their pants from around their ankles and ran back in the forest. I woke Joshua up and I told him someone was outside watching us. Joshua suggested that we go inside the house and I agreed. The next morning, we told Joshua's parents that we slept inside the house because I saw someone in the forest. Joshua never told his parents about Doug, and I don't think he had to because Joshua told me he never heard anything else from Doug again after that night. Joshua and I both think that Doug was in the forest watching a treehouse that night. We both thought of many different theories of what he was planning to do, and honestly, none of those were actually good. I'm glad he never came up there. I'm Brian. Recently, someone asked me if I believed in the paranormal or if I've had an experience that I felt was paranormal. I replied saying that I'm not sure if I believed in paranormal or not, but I did have a creepy experience. When I was nine years old, I had a best friend who lived across the street from me whose name was Maddie. On Fridays and Saturdays, Maddie and I had this plan where we would stay awake past 11 p.m. That was the time both our parents would usually be asleep. We would look out of each other's windows, and we'll use binoculars and flashlights, and we would shine a light to each other's bedroom window, and that would let us know that we're getting on the PlayStation 3 that night while our parents were sleeping. If neither of us shined a light by 11.30 p.m., that meant we weren't playing the PlayStation that night. It was a Friday night, and I stayed up until around 11.30, and I didn't get a response from Maddie's flashlight. I wasn't really tired, and I had already switched on my PS3 so I thought I would play for a little bit. As I was on the PlayStation, I noticed Maddie had came online. I sent him a message asking him why he didn't respond with his flashlight. Maddie didn't reply. I got up and I shined my flashlight into his room again. I still didn't get a response. I went back on my PS3 and I saw Maddie had replied. The message just said, hello. This didn't seem like Maddie at all. I replied back asking if he wanted to play. Maddie replied saying, look at my window. I got my binos up and my flashlight and I looked carefully through Maddie's bedroom window. 
I felt a cold chill when I saw a black tall figure standing in Maddie's window watching me. I didn't know what was going on. If this was a joke, or was he just trying to frighten me? I didn't want to talk to Maddie anymore that night, or play the PS3, so I switched everything off and I tried to go to sleep. I found it difficult to fall asleep that night. I kept feeling like if I looked out my window, I would see that figure watching me again. The following Sunday, Maddie called me and asked if I wanted to come outside and play. When I was outside, I asked what was going on with him the previous Friday and if he was playing a joke on me with that tall figure. Maddie looked at me confused and asked what I was talking about. I explained to him what happened and what I saw. He said that he didn't know what I was talking about as he and his parents were away for the past two days and they just got back that morning. I showed Maddie the messages I received from his account that night. After reading the messages, he looked like he believed me. Maddie then told me that sometimes in the night his PS3 will turn on and off by itself. And there's been times where he was sure that he turned off his PS3 before leaving the house and when he returned it was back on again. I don't know if what I saw was paranormal, but it still remains the scariest thing that I've ever seen in my life.